Uh, data centers is my world, uh, coming from the hyperscalers. I know a lot of you are dealing with UPSs with lithium ion in it. So when we're talking about this, you're definitely over a 30% state of charge, right? You're usually sitting at about 100%, things like that. So again, you are falling into these categories. Um, so while we've been talking, and we'll talk a little bit more a little later down the line about active systems, we can definitely talk about that. The presentation today kind of focused in on storage and transportation, but we can definitely talk about the UPS systems and everything like that. Uh, just a little bit more about AmeriCase. We do everything under one roof, uh, from discovery, testing, uh, manufacturing. We're an ISO 9000 facility, uh, an AQ facility as well. Uh, we're also one of the very few companies in the world that has a DOT UN special permit allowing us to transport DDR batteries. Of course, we can transport only by ground, uh, back to your OEM, to a lab, to a recycler, whatever that may be. Again, kind of what's your solution today, especially from a storage uh, perspective, um, retrofit uh, to a dangerous goods room, right? Those things can cost about a quarter, a quarter million to a half a million dollars to retrofit a room, depending on what you're carrying. Third-party storage off-site, which uh, poses the logistical nightmares in and itself. Um, and of course, just wrecks havoc on your supply chain. So this is something that we did. New line cabinets, again, as Chris mentioned, we do a lot of testing. So. You know, everybody takes a look at these new line cabinets, and we cannot believe how many people use this yellow cabinet to store lithium ion and uh, disastrous effect, especially when you go into a thermal runaway. So our challenge, our challenge was from the hyperscaler uh, to not be named. Uh, Meta. Um, they, the challenge was um, all their data centers were built without dangerous goods room, right? Anything built from like 2012 onwards, they didn't think about lithium ion. They were built without the DG room. So they challenged us saying, Joel, we need to figure out a way to store lithium ion, both active and in storage. How do we do that? How do we also be green? How do we go get away from this cardboard pallet and wood pallets and packaging from the OEM that is just a lot of dunnage that we have to throw away? We're not being very green, Joel. How do we do that? Um, can we just have one packaging that handles the entire ecosystem? OEM to the data center, from the data center to the recycler. Uh, can we just have one type of packaging? Um, Joel, we're going to have multiple versions of uh, uh, batteries. We're going to have, we've got the current generation, we've got the next generation, three years from now, we're going to have the future generation. Can this packaging just take care of all of those? And then end of life, like I just mentioned. And hey, Joel, we got a budget, right? Return on investment. If you can make this under a year, let's do that. So what was the lithium ion battery that we were dealing with here? It was the uh, BBU battery, uh, battery backup unit. Uh, is it everybody here familiar with this product? Anybody that's not? OK, so long story short, uh, as you can tell by the size, uh, basically this is rack level power redundancy. So think about eight of these batteries sitting in every rack. So when a rack goes down, you've got about eight minutes of juice for it, for it to dump its latest data to a mirror image somewhere in another cluster or another region. So uh, this is the BBU battery. Quite a few hyperscalers are starting to use this. If you're a colo operator and you have some of these big hyperscalers as your tenants, you may want to ask them, are they carrying these type of things in their rack architecture? Um, I would say three of the biggest hyperscalers are carrying BBUs now in the rack architecture. That is one battery that's going into a thermal runaway right now. And we, like I said, we spend a lot of time trying to understand the battery. Just for a dramatic effect, I'm gonna repeat that slide. So every time you see that flame come out, that is one out of 70 cells going into a thermal runaway. So again, the propagation uh, through that. So now can you imagine a data center that has 120, 1,000 of these batteries or these BBUs sitting in their warehouse, there's nothing that really contains it. That would be a worst case the every, every totally agree. Lithium, lithium ion, the lithium ion, the BBUs are inherently safe. I'll put my mortgage on it. But it, is it just enough for us to say that's the worst case scenario? These guys have to think of the worst case scenario, right? And, the, and that's from that point of view, but as well as Another point of view is now the regulators. As Chris was mentioning a little bit before, is that we're going to start seeing those IFC, uh, the IFC 24 rules come in place, the fire marshals coming in. And let's be honest with you, it's the wild, wild west. You know, 
Joe Bob down in Alabama, fire marshal, has a different interpretation of the rule than the guy up here in New York. So how do we deal with that? So coming back to the case study, how we solve the problem. We developed a packaging, and what we do is we do the alternate ways and means. Again, Chris kind of mentioned that little asterisk mark in the IFC 24 that we can prove that our packaging can contain that. That suffices for all regulations, and we've been able to do this globally. So this is the uh, BBU case that we designed for the hyperscalers. Again, we've got about four of the top five hyperscalers using this product right now. Uh, stores about 40 batteries. You can store it anywhere. You don't need a dangerous goods room. You can store this anyway. This one, of course, is a passive storage, but we do have active ones as well. So if in a UPS device or something like that, we can design packaging to, that can encase the UPS device in order to keep it safe. Uh, it exceeds all the US, EU, Asia PAC requirements for lithium ion rules today and tomorrow. Again, the benefit of, of the America solution is since we sit on the UN board, the, SEG, G20, the SAE boards, the G27 boards, we know the rules and regulations coming down tomorrow, so we can future-proof this, right? Uh, some of the other benefits from a kind of a sustainability, eco-friendly perspective, um, where the return on investment came in very, very quickly. Uh, per pallet position, we were able to store more per pallet position. This one could hold 40, but I can stack it up to three high. So now I'm getting 120 BBUs per pallet position. It reduces uh, transportation costs. I can put more on the truck, reduces emissions. Um, in your warehousing, things like that. Uh, of course, you can see there's kids on it, so we can use pallet jacks. Um, we've been doing this for about six years with this product. Not one has come back. 95% um, of the case is recyclable at the end of life. We haven't seen one come back to us yet. Uh, we've seen a couple come back with broken latches, but that's about it. But, um, and then it also exceeds the EU packaging laws that are gonna come into effect here in the next couple of years. So when you throw our case up against everybody else's. Um, the first two pictures are ours, uh, and then uh, what Nico safe is one in the middle, and then you line. Uh, pound for pound, we, we beat the, beat out the competition. But the beautiful part about it is we test your battery inside our case, so it will take that full thermal runaway at 100% charge. That's the testing. That's the testing documentation we give you to be able to go back to your fire marshal in case, you know, Joe Bob from your fire marshal shows up. The alternate ways it means of testing exceeds all the requirements today. So that's exactly our solution at a fraction of the cost. Next one is our DDR case. Uh, again, this is for damaged, defective, and recalled batteries. Um, again, uh, sort of like you mentioned, lithium ion is inherently safe. It's usually people that screw it up, right? They drop the battery, they do something as they're installing or decommissioning then it becomes a DDR. So how do you handle a DDR? This one, uh, the AmeriCase product, uh, we are one of the very few companies, again, has the UN DOT special permit that allows us to transport DDRs back to the facility. So this, instead of using a big 50 gallon barrel with vermiculite and having to deal with all that, just use the suitcase as our solution. It handles, it takes care of all the requirements. I did not mean to blow through this presentation, but I kind of did. But you know, like I said, I'm going to give you guys some time back. But let me open this up for questions. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, I know for I know for a fact a lot of you here are using it in a UPS system. We do have solutions for active systems that we can do packaging around active systems in pods. We have done that solution before for the government for the hyperscaler things like that. Have we taken that to scale yet? Not really but there's nothing to say that we have that. But well, we've done about 20 applications of that so far. But any questions? Yes, sir. Do you think this is the DOT uh, level? Uh, you can't you can do DDR by flight. Okay. Uh, so that's just strictly with ground transportation. By, by ground transportation. But we do, America does have a global network of recyclers that we can take advantage of. So if your facility is in the EU, we have a EU facility that we can do with recyclers. So if you're looking to just dispose of it, for example, DOT case right to the recycler in the EU, Asia PAC, wherever you may be. So we do have a global network of recyclers that we can tap into to take your de defective battery. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Do you have, do you have any, do you have any considerations to like Yeah, I mean, you can definitely proceed down the path of a dangerous goods room. My, my, my wife right now is working on that. She, uh, she actually builds data centers for AWS. She works for AWS, and she's looking at those solutions right now 
but again, these are new construction, right? So now what do you do with the legacy stuff? And, that, and that's kind of where we sit at that, that sweet spot in the legacy side of everything, right? Uh, but to be honest with you, again, rules are changing, right? So what the rules are today might not be the rules for tomorrow. Depending on how many racks or how many UPS devices you keep inside that room may change the design of that room, right? And operations is always the last guy to know what the damn engineers are trying to push down into us into our ecosystem. So that's why we went more down to the packaging solution saying this is more versatile because hey, we're testing towards your UPS device to make sure we can hold the full thermal right away containment um, as opposed to. And again, you know, we're, I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? Rob. Rob, we're not, you know, again, we're looking at instead of spending that quarter million dollars, half a million dollars, not knowing if this is going to be future proofed, you're spending $4,000, you know. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So the, the battery cabinets that we have uh, is based on dimensions. I mean, we can do a long, a long one uh, across the floor, or we can do a stand-up UPS cabinet. Uh, we do have the thermal runaway containment solutions, and then the leads that are any type of leads that are coming out of the case that are protected to be able to withstand that thermal runaway, so that that exit point for the leads does not become a failure point in the thermal runaway cases. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you a little bit more about it afterwards because again, everybody's design is so unique. And that's why we don't do off-the-shelf solutions. Because first of all, we do custom solutions because your battery is different than Ron's battery. Ron's battery is probably different than David's battery, right? I don't know what you're, so I'm not gonna, and that's the, that's the thing about AmeriCase, we don't do a one-size-fits-all. We have one, maybe two products, our Superbox, that is just a one-size-fits-all where, yeah, this is used in New York for the contract, they store all the DeWalt battery uh, batteries and at the end of the day. And that's probably our only off-the-shelf product. But especially when it comes to UPS or BBUs, we test to your battery. We built your battery. So in your case, you, you guys might have identical uh, dimensions in your batteries, but depending on your chemistry and your architecture of your battery, your case may be different than his because it may need, require more thermal runaway containment properties. Did I, I know I kind of skirted around your question, but I think, I think it'll be a follow-up question with you saying, what are you looking for? What's your dimensions? What's your architecture look like? Maybe for, maybe, uh, like, like for example, we have batteries. We have worked with the OEMs and we're in design to do, again, uh, doing some more mass produced items. But again, if we don't know the battery that's in there, again, the OEMs like Vertus are getting their batteries from somebody else. So. When I test towards a battery, so those BBU batteries, for example, they come from four different manufacturers around the world. I can't just say that the battery from Panasonic is exactly the same from Trending Power or Rising Power side. I can't say that. I have to test both those batteries to make sure, because again, they build it slightly different. This BBU battery, for example, and the, the hyperscale was very surprised when we did this testing. We found out that one big OEM that he thought was, uh, so one big OEM used flame resistors his other OEM, thankfully through our testing, we found out didn't use flame resistors. It was exactly the same battery. One used flame resistors, one did not. So what happened in a thermal runaway type of event? We had two different scenarios come out of this thing. So that the little video graphic that I showed you was the OEM that did not use flame resistors. And what did they tell my client? Oh, flames never escaped the cabinet or the, in the casing. And when we showed him his testing on his battery, he was like, holy S, what the? So, so to answer your question again, they're all very unique. So when we're working with the burdens of the world and the cabinet manufacturers, we need to understand what are the, what are the batteries they're trying to put into it. That's where this thing gets a little dicey trying to work with the burdens. And we're trying to, don't get me wrong, and we're trying to make that one size fits all, but in order for us to be compliant with today's regulations, and again, give you a stamp of 100% approval for thermal runaway, it's, the, it's about the battery and not necessarily about the cabinet itself and the, and the dimensions. Did I answer your question sort of, or did I totally avoid it? Which I'm good at doing, by the way. We have to test towards it. It doesn't mean, but again, that's the beautiful thing about AmeriCase is that we don't charge you for the R&D. You know, we love testing batteries. That's one side of our house just does testing. We love to see what different batteries do. We love testing, you know, and we'll test to your battery. I mean, the, the whole like, time, timeline of like, hey, this is the battery.
I mean, if I had all the requirements of what you're doing then, I, I can go from zero to, uh, zero to 60 months, uh, zero to 60 days and have a product for you if I had all the requirements. Everything's in house. I don't sub out anything from R&D to testing and to manufacturing. It is literally all done in a 150,000 square foot facility in Dallas, Texas. So literally, the, and the beautiful thing is we're kind of walking down the path of designing Testing is occurring at the same time on your battery, understanding the thermal runaway properties, while r and is kind of working up a case. Again, the beautiful thing about, uh, what's your name, sir? Patrick? Patrick, the beautiful thing is, we, as Chris mentioned, we've done so many testing. So we've seen different type of configurations. So you showing me a battery, I'll be like, I kind of understand what this is coming from, right? I, I, I have a similar thing that I've designed in the past. Let me bring that as a foundational design. While, and then we can start working on kind of a design while our testing group is testing out your battery to make sure, is it the same way we thought it was? Great, fantastic. Because at the end of the day, when I give you a product, I'm putting my stamp on it, saying, because I'm giving you a stamp and documentation for you to go back to anybody in the globe, fire marshals, regulators, whoever it may be, saying, your cabinet will, will stamp it. So yeah, we have requirements, we're nimble. That's the beautiful part about us. Uh, some of the other stuff that we deal with, and just to give you an idea for robust packaging, uh, we send stuff on to the International Space Station, SpaceX, NASA, they use our packaging. Um, again, Chris mentioned about the, um, uh, the Samsung phone that was exploding. 2.3 million recalls we handled. Um, some of you are as old as I am. Remember the value jet that went down in the Everglades? That was an oxygen cylinder that exploded. Now every plane has an AmeriCase packaging handling that oxygen cylinder. So robust packaging, we do helicopter blades, right, uh, Brett? Brett? This is my buddy Brett over here. We do helicopter blades. So as you can imagine, those things can't even take one stress fracture in movement, right? Otherwise, you know, the helicopter blade breaks apart. So that's our game. We're in that robust packaging, both in an active and passive form. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, does this apply to all lithium-based uh, batteries, as, for instance, the uh, lithium iron phosphate as well? It does. And then uh, for the cases that you guys are, are making, mm -hmm. how are you handling off-gassing? It, it, uh, so depending on what your requirements are, um, again, if, if you're looking at the solution that, we, that I've been showing here, th those are passive, right? So you're going to get a little bit of gas that's going to be vented out in a thermal runaway event. But again, back to this gentleman's question, it was, it's inherently safe. The chances of it going to a thermal runaway is it, but you will have gas, it will be emitted, and the passive case stuff. Now we do make active ca cases, but we can take the gas and, and disperse that out as well. It all depends on what your requirements are. Are you looking for a storage case, transportation case, or a transportation case, a, a case that's actively holding a UPS system that you need to be vented out? We can handle all of that. Just, again, the requirements dictate what we, what, what, what we do for your case. Yes, sir. How are these going to address certain municipalities that are putting KW limits on batteries size in rooms? So, again, with the alternate ways and means of testing, which is, again, what we, Chris mentioned that little asterisk on the IFC 24 rule, because we're testing our product against your battery and we, we are showing conclusive undeniable proof in testing that it will contain a full thermal runaway of your battery within this case that suffices all those regulations well so i guess it specifies yep. maripose county phoenix is looking at just instituting a county-wide rule of 600 kw or 600 kw hour mm -hmm. limit as far as it doesn't matter if it's active storage anything mm -hmm. you know, room would these cases fall under an exemption of that or are we just these cases would fall under an exemption of that right because i'm actually if it's very close to county not isc it, it, because again, it, absolutely. So again, if Mariposa County, this is Phoenix, right? Yeah. It, they have that requirement of that limitation because we can show inconclusive, we can show conclusive proof that it can handle it. More often than not, we have not come across any municipality that has said. I still want to hold on to my 600 kW because if we can show that a thousand kW can be can go into a full thermal runaway at 100% state of charge, I should state again when we do our testing, every battery is in 100% state of charge, and we can show that if the case takes that full blunt of it, we, we don't. They I, we've not come across in our 500 600. Uh, review sessions with municipalities across the globe that anybody said, okay, no, I want to stick to my 600. It's because, why do they come up with that 600 kW? It's something that they feel that the products out there in the market, whether it's off the shelf, whether it's the Ecoline cabinet or whatever it may be, can handle up to 600 kW. Anything beyond that, then 
who's going to do the testing towards it? The municipality is not going to do the testing towards it. They're not going to approve it or anything like that. Did I answer your question on that one? Yes, sir. When you do your testing, mm -hmm. you, you, you completely fill one of those cases with 100% charged batteries, and then, and then run, run your test. Fan charge is 100 percent, right? And then, and, I, and then that specific one, I put some, I put a thermal, a th a ceramic thermal heater around yeah. one of the cells. What you saw is the continuous flames was the propagations to the other 70 cells in that BBU. So you can have a full case, 100 percent charge batteries, and you run your test and make sure that you're not going to. You got it, my friend. Now that's that's the extensive testing, and that, uh, and again, this is why the United Nations comes to us, or the U.S. government comes to us, is that we can do that level of testing. And then we do a whole bunch of other testing. We do the, you know, the, the UL drop testing. We do all the other things. We do uh, water resistant testing. We do the whole full gamut again. Back to your question, requirements, depending on what the requirements are. I mean, my hyperscalers keep our cases outside for Christ's sake. Uh, as soon as the OEM drops off the truck, it sits outside um, Phoenix as well in that desert heat. Uh, they store it there. But yes, we, we put all the batteries, all 40 batteries, threw it to 100% state of charge, and uh, then made it go into a thermal runaway. And just try, try and see. A, we're also looking at a case also. In our case designs, we're also making sure there's no propagation from one battery to the next, right? That's we're looking for that too, right? Okay, so that's what. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at that as well because you know it doesn't it doesn't do us any good that we build that case and um, you know all all, all forty BB is going to a thermal right away because due to propagation. So part of our testing is to make sure that we have that segregation so that propagation doesn't happen from one battery to the other. That's part of our testing as well. Did I hit it? All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Patrick. This one? So, again, um, this is kind of a, um, you're, you're going to see this in a lot of major cities. Again, with lithium ion and some of the regular, uh, you know, you know Marsco County right now has a lot of regulations coming in. New York City's got a lot of regulations coming into play. A lot of, you'll see a lot of uh, companies coming in with these kind of pod based off site type of uh, solutions, right? Um, the cost where it's approximately like one of those sections, I believe it's like a, a 10 by 20, it's about $15,000 a month. And it's like a, it's, it's a container pot. They can just drop it. They can just drop it down into your parking lot. So now you have a uh, dangerous goods room uh, readily available. I can do this solution, but I think you're fifteen thousand dollars a month. I can build you a much better solution that's a lot more cost effective, as long as you give me, like I said, thirty days to help you out there. Uh, but this is a great. Oh, I, we do have clients, and we do have connections with the companies that do this. It's a good stopgap measure because they got to get compliant very quickly, right? So we will refer them to a company that does these type of things while we're working the better long-term solution for you as well. So get you in compliance very quickly. Any other questions, sir? Yes, we have. Uh, we have uh, not done any applications yet for that. We're still in our testing phase because that thing burns hot. Burns very, very hot. So we're doing uh, we're doing some testing on that right now, but we haven't done any applications as of yet. But love to keep you informed on our testing. Uh, we do uh, what twice a year. Brett, when's the next one? October, October. November. Uh, we just finished one in November. We do a workshop where we blow up batteries. We do thermal runaway testings. Uh, we let the public come in. Uh, if you have a battery that you'd like us to kind of blow up, go into thermal runway, ha happy to have, get, let us have it you know, a couple of uh, months beforehand, uh, two of them, right? And we're happy to do that. But uh, yeah, we it's a general public, it's open to all. We have the, uh, kind of the best of the best um, of lithium ion experts, uh, thermal runaway experts, testing experts, the United Nations is there, the government is there. Um, and it's a workshop, it's about two days long. Um, there's panels, just like we you see here at Addison World, but uh, we break it up uh, pretty much every hour and a half and we do thermal runaway testing. Um, everything from consumer devices all the way up to EVs. I mean, we design cases for Volvo buses. Um, I mean, that, that thing is about the size of the stage, basically, that case. This thing is a massive thing. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, so from EVs, all the major EV companies use our cases for, you know, those uh, Teslas that you see on fire and what you do with those Teslas afterwards. Uh, our big case comes into play uh, for those guys. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but. 
Great question there. But uh, happy to share more information on the testing we've been doing so far. But um, those things burn very, very hot. I think it's like 2,000 degrees, uh, 2,000 degrees. So uh, our usual uh, aircraft aluminum that we use in our acro, our patent acro material, um, we're, we're, seeing, we're, we're struggling <laughs> to find a solution. But hey, that's what, what's a, that's what we're here for doing. So any other questions? Well, guys, last day of Data Center World, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Joel. I think Brett handed out some cards. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Appreciate it. Thank you.